Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and today we're going to be taking a look at this uh, RX 580 GTS PCV from XFX. Um, the pictures were sent in by a fan of the channel, so huge thanks to him for sending them in, um, because there's not really any other way I would have covered this card, I think. Uh, yeah, no, there would... I don't know. I didn't really look into it much, but since, you know, since he sent them, I'm like, well, now I'm kind of obligated to cover it, aren't I? Anyway, let's get right into it. So before we get into the VRMs, it's worth noting that this card does indeed have a dual BIOS switch. So that means if you have this card and you want to mess around with BIOS modding, you're pretty much, you're, you know, it's going to be very, very safe because uh, uh, if you screw up, you can just flick that switch and you know, you, you, you're on the back of BIOS, and actually I have a video detailing the entire process, so you can go watch that. Um, I probably won't remember to link it in the description, but I might, so you might want to check that there as well. Uh, anyway, let's get to the VRMs, starting with the most important one, the vCore VRM right here. Um, so that's your vCore. Then above that, you have the VDDCI. Um, so that's your memory controller power. Um, this one is a real, like, changing the, out, like, raising the voltage on that, very, very easy way to kill a card. That's how I blew up the, that's how I killed the RX 480 GTR that I had. Yeah, with way too much VDDCI. And by way too much, I mean barely more than stock. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, actually, no, it wasn't really barely, because I was like 200 millivolts above stock. Just didn't realize that stock was 0.85. So, yeah, that, that went really badly. That killed the card. Um, this right here is the memory power. So that's your VMEM. And then down here we have the little display drive rail, which is a... So, VDisp. And that powers some uh, PLLs as well as the display uh, outputs of the, the GPU. And this can sometimes help with black screen issues on LN2, but otherwise it's, you know, uninteresting to everyday overclockers. So, um, let's get into the vCore VRM, because that's the most important one. It looks like a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 phase, but is it? Well, um, this chip right here is an NCP, uh, 81022 which is one of the two voltage controllers you can have on an RX 480, 580, or, uh, or actually any card from AMD post uh, GCN 1.1, but before Vega. Vega has the 357, uh, no, what is it? The 35217, I want to say, is the full model number. And the every, like from the 290, like the 260X, 290X, uh, 390X, 370, like all of the GCN 1.1 cards use either an NCP 81022 or they use a 3567B from International Rectifier. Now this uses then uh, 81022 and this thing is a four plus two phase voltage controller. So that's, that's bad news for this six phase right here. Um, and we can tell that it's configured in a three plus one phase configuration because it also controls the VDDCI and that's one phase right there. So that's running in three plus one. And on the back of the card, because you, you can't just get six phases out of a, you know, four phase voltage controller, there are some doublers right here. So these chips are NCP uh, 8116s. These are doublers, one PWM signal goes in, two come out, um, and the two that come out are basically just in, like, they're, it literally just splits up the incoming PWM signal in between the two phases. So this is a, well, it's not completely dumb. It does have the, some basic current balancing capabilities. If one phase is pushing, um... I'm going to try to remember what the data sheet set here. It would be just easier to link the data sheets, but which incidentally it's public. If you throw this into, if you go to on semiconductors website, throw this into the search bar, you'll find it. Uh, but uh, basically as lo if the peak, yes, peak output current for the, so, you know, if you have, cause this controls two phases. So you'll have like phase A right down here and phase B. And if the peak output current of phase B does not exceed the average current going through phase A, it will send an extra pulse to phase B. And that should then get the average current through a, uh, phase B close to, uh, well, what it'll, it'll essentially do, well, 
it has potential to fail and then a like a ends up you know requiring two pulses but in theory it should get the two the the car the average current through each of the phases closer together or at least uh the peak current of phase a at that point should still be higher than the average current through phase b of course if that doesn't happen then it'll s send two pulses to phase a so you, you could end up in a situation where it's like trying to balance and it's doing two pulses and then two pulses to B, and then two pulses to A, and two pulses to B, which is, like, that's bad. <laughs> like, that really is not something you would want happening. But um, under most circumstances, that shouldn't end up happening. Because um, the phases really on their own shouldn't tend to get that out of balance anyway. And then you'd also need it to be, like, out of balance. And then when, the, when phase B gets the extra pulse, it would, like... So, you know, this is still better than having a volta uh, than a doubler that just doesn't do any current balancing at all, because in that scenario, you can end up with in a situation where one of the phases is pushing like, well, zero current compared to the other one, literally zero, um, though that would be extremely unlikely to actually encounter. But, you know, it could happen. And th this uh, this uh, current balancing scheme that the NCP 80, the 81162 uses does at least avoid that worst case scenario, even if it's not ideal. Also, this is the same control scheme that, uh, oops, um, if we go back here, there, just was on the wrong layer, but this is actually the same control scheme, so the three times two plus one setup that they have here, that's actually the same VRM setup in terms of controls as what you would find on an RX 580 Nitro from Sapphire for all the Nitro cards that have a six phase VRM because I, I think they also have a couple cards that are on a four phase but all the six phase ones they use this exact same uh, VRM setup so you know this, this is arguably a better VRM control scheme than what you would get on something like the Nitro limited edition you know the, the blue one and very expensive one so yeah that's worth noting because that also uses the 81022 and since it does use actual doublers with the bare minimum of current balancing integrated into this, I do consider this a six phase. It's not a real six phase, but it's pretty close to being a real six phase. You know, it's better, definitely not a three. So we can count this as a six phase. And now let's talk power capabilities. This thing is actually really powerful. I was really surprised when, when, when I pulled up the data sheet for these. These are FDMF. 3035s from Fairchild Semiconductor. These are specced as 50 amp power stages, which is, which, which, like, for comparison, there's, like, two other cards that have a stronger PCB than this thing that I can remember off the top of my head. The RX 580 Strix, which uses International Rectifier 3555s, which are 60 amp power stages, and then the XFX GTR-S, which uses... A international rectifier uses two international rectifier direct FETs. Um, basically, it has the same VRM as what you would find on a Fury X. And those are good for like 60 amps per phase as well. Um, actually, potentially more if you can supply enough cooling. That's the main problem with those. It's just like they're, they're very, very much tied to cooling. But basically, yeah, this, this thing is one very, very powerful VRM. So let's talk efficiencies. Um... 1 volt, uh, 100 amps, which is below what a RX... Well, an RX 480 would actually push this at around 1 volt. Around, not at 1 volt. Um, slightly above that. But, yeah, an RX 480 would pull around 100 amps stock. For that, you'd be looking at only 8.5 watts of heat from this VRM. Like, this should not heat, need a heat sink at that point. Um, for 1.25 volts and... Uh, 150 to 200 amps, which you would actually hit with an RX 580 um, somewhere, or a 480, it's basically the same chip. The main difference will be what kind of frequency you can hit at this voltage. A 1.25 volts, which is what I would recommend for daily settings, because, uh, yeah, it's not going to be super power efficient, but you're going to have, like, you're on 1.25 volts, you're going to be looking at sort of 1400 to 1500 megahertz, potentially 1550 on some really good cards. Um, so, you know, 1400 to 1500 megahertz on 1.25 volts, you're going to be looking at around between 150 and 200 amps current output. And for that amount of current output, this VRM produces 15 watts of heat 
for 150A and for 200A it's producing 24 watts of heat. Um, as long as this thing has a solid heat sink, which I think this should have because there are heat sink mounting holes in this, and I think XFX integrates the VRM heat sink into the actual like GPU core heat sink. So th this should have plenty of surface area. Um, yeah, th this is, you know, th this is better than a lot of the motherboards I look at for much at 140 amps, <laughs> admittedly. So yeah, this thing has a better VRM than most of the motherboards we covered recently, which isn't surprising because GPUs are just much higher current draw devices in general. So finding an RX 580 with a better VRM than a, than a motherboard, not surprising. And then for 1.5 volts, which you wouldn't actually, like on liquid nitrogen, you might want to run that, but most of the time, like the, the current figures, I, I was lazy. Um, I did decided, because the thing is, um, these FDMF 30, 35, 50 amp power stages, going from one volt to 1.5 volts, you're looking at only a 10% increase in power, like heat dissipation, which is crazy efficient, actually. Like these things are optimized for a very wide voltage, like output voltage range, because most other power stages that I've looked at in the past um, you do this difference in voltage output and you're looking at more like 15 or even 20% change in uh, power dissipation. And so for the sake of, you know, not having a bunch of figures that are like cramped up against each other, I went from 1.25 to 1.5 volts, even though the, the current draw difference would not like, does not reflect that. Um, well, 1.5 volts, 250 amps, you're going to be looking at 36 watts of heat output, which, you know, in reality, to do 250 amps, you'd actually be well below 1.5 volts, so significant, you know, a bit below that 36 watt figure, because again, the efficiency really doesn't change that much. Um, and then 300 amps output, you're going to be looking at, well, not even efficiency, but like heat dissipation, because the efficiency actually goes up as you raise the voltage. Um, and then for 300 amps, you'd be looking at 56 watts of heat output. So, this really depends on VRM cooling at this point, but it's not, you know, hugely inefficient um, for sure. Like, it's definitely not massively inefficient. So, yeah, this is a really, really impressive PCB for, for you know, like, th this isn't a top-of-the-line card for XFX. And, uh, yeah, I must say I'm impressed. Like, I can definitely, like, I don't know how the heatsink on this thing is, but as far as the PCB is concerned, I'd take this thing on liquid nitrogen and it, it would survive it. And interestingly enough, the FDMF 30, 35 uh, power stage data sheet, um, that 50 amp current rating is not based on any anything but thermal limitations. Basically, with the testing conditions that Fairchild uses, which is they have it mounted on an evaluation board, which... I don't remember the, like, I didn't read the specifications of that, but basically a zero airflow environment, 25 degrees ambient, this thing will overheat, will hit 150 degrees Celsius internal temperature if you try to push 50 amps through it. But that's with no heat sink and no airflow. So if you had a heat sink on these and you were on liquid nitrogen, you know, so the PCB would actually be freezing through and the starting temperature of this VRM would be really low, I would not be surprised if these were capable of pushing significantly more than 50 amps. Admittedly, at that point, the heat output of them would get kind of silly, but yeah, I, I'd be, I'd be, like, I would totally take this on liquid nitrogen. This is perfectly good for that. Um, so yeah, I, I like, I, I really like this PCB. Um, considering that it's, like, not even a, like, that's the thing, it's like, it's not the GTR-S. I would have expected something a lot weaker, and it's like, well, you know, the control scheme is not ideal, it's not a real six phase, which you could have with a 3567B, but for a card, like, for a card that's priced where this is, I was really expecting, like, 40 amp power stages or worse, because that's what the Nitro has. The Nitro uses International Rectifier 3553s. Those are 40 amp power stages. And then there's the Red Devil, which uses, like, 35 amp power stages. So it's just, like... So so this is, like, for, for the price point, this is probably the best RX 580 PCB you can get. Um, because, yeah, these power stages are crazy overkill. And they get even more overkill when, like, XFX slapped that same power stage onto the VDDCI, right? So another one, well, I'm not going to even bother writing it out, but for VDDCI, you have another one of these FDMF 30, 50, 35s, 
3035s. Uh, stumbling over my words here. And uh, so VDDCI is, you know, 0.85 volts stock. And um, I'm not sure how much current it actually outputs. It should be really low from my past testing on some other, like I tested an HD7 uh, 950. HD7, no, 1797, no, 17950. Yes, I got it right the first time, damn it. <laughs> but the 17950 that I tested, you'd, you'd be looking at around 10 to 20 amps. And for those current outputs, this thing for 10 amps, it's crazy efficient. 0 0.8 watts of heat output, um, which is actually like, actually it would be less because you're, you know, low voltage. But uh, the data sheet doesn't specify what happens below one volt. So we're just going to go with 0 0.8 watts. Oh, and I forgot to mention that I'm assuming 5 volts drive. Um, 5 volts drive for the VRM specs and 300 kilohertz switching frequency. Um, but anyway, so for VDDCI, you know, same specs, again, a 5 volts drive, 300 kilohertz. And there for 20 amps, you'd be looking at 1.5 watts. So this right here is just stupid overkill. Um, and that's nice. Overkill is good. We like overkill. Um, and actually, speaking of the drive, there is a LDO on the back here, right here, that I assume is the gate drive. And the thing is, I'm not sure if that actually outputs five volts because I'm not sure that there's anything else on this card that needs five volts. And if you drive these power stages on six volts, they get another 5% more efficient. They go from like, well, uh, the, their heat dissipation drops by 5%. So it's not that they get 5% more efficient, but they produce 5% less heat. So yeah, DRV, their drive. So, you know, it might be, like, assuming this is only gate drive, it might be that the NCP81, I'm not sure that this doesn't run on three, five volts. This might run on five volts, not 3.3. .3. But if there's nothing else on this car, like, if that LDO is literally just po powering the VRM, then uh, it could be pushing six volts and then the VRM efficiency would be better. Or if you were, you know, really... Uh, uh, well, if you wanted to go really overboard on modifying your card, you could potentially like mod the draw, like try isolate the drive circuit, like the drive power plane for the MOSFETs, and feed that straight six volts, and that that would give you a bit more VRM efficiency again. But that might already be at six volts, so you'd probably want to check that before doing any modifications. So yeah, V core and VDDCI. Very, very, like, nice. I'm very, very impressed with what XFX have done here. Uh, memory VRM is... Uh, they use this VRM on the GTR, and I'm not going to go through the current ratings for this thing because it's going to be the usual memory VRM is overkill, as usual, because it's always overkill. Um, memory really doesn't pull enough current to really cause concerns. But you do get a single high side... Well, it could cause concerns, but like this, this if of all the VRMs to save costs on, this is not one of them. It's usually V-Corp, because here if you downgrade one phase, you downgrade six phases and, you know, the, your sa savings stack up. But you have two low sides, one high side MOSFET. It's controlled by an APW8722, uh, so that's the standard voltage controller for most... RX 480s, 580s for their memory power. That's usually what's used. It's a single phase. Um, depending on what flavor you get, it might go up to 600 kilohertz. It might be 300. Um, the MOSFETs, the high side is a Sinnoh Power 4377. And the low side MOSFETs are 4373s. And I've gone over this VRM before on some card, and I, that's why I know it is overkill, because I've done it in the past, except back then I didn't write down my scripts. So, well, didn't it's not really a script, but I didn't write down my notes, so I can't go back to check to steal those power ratings. So that sucks, doesn't it? But it's overkill. You can just go find the... Actually, yeah, the RX480 GTR video covers this VRM. So you can go and just watch that one, and it'll it'll cover it, I think. I'm pretty sure it'll cover it. Um, so yeah, that's plenty overkill. And then this right here is the good old APW 87... Um, 
713, which is a fully integrated buck converter. And I want to say it's rated for 9 amps or 10 amps output. And again, you don't have to worry about this because this the only time you should even consider modifying this voltage is on liquid nitrogen. And it still doesn't really push that much power. But it is an APW 8713, uh, which I think is what all the other what XFX used on the past cards. So, yeah. That's the that's the RX 580 GTS. I'm actually really impressed because I was, as I said earlier, I was expecting 40 amp power stages, and instead I got 50 um, ridiculously efficient ones too. Like their efficiency, most power stages like flatline around 0.8 watts. Um, at least the like the international rectifier 3555 and 3556, and like, there's a lot of power stages where you go below sort of 10 watts, uh, 10 amps output. And the, their power efficiency, just like their heat output, just flatlines at that point. But these go all the way down to like 0 0.5 watts at, you know, very, very low current output. So these get, so even at very low current outputs, these get get pretty damn good efficiency. So, yeah, I'm, I'm really impressed by this VRM right here. Like I was not expecting uh, 50 amp power stages at all. And yeah, as long as the, like, I don't know how the heatsink is on this thing, but assuming that if the heatsink is good, then this is a, you know, RX 580, I can very strongly recommend because that is one hell of a VRM. Um, so yeah, props to XFX for making yet another great RX 580. Um, and that's it for the video. Thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe, leave any comments, questions, or suggestions down in the comment section below. If you'd like to support what I do here with actually hardcore overclocking, I have a PayPal, a Patreon, and t-shirts you can buy. There's a link to all of that down in the description below. And that's it for the video, so goodbye, and see you next time.